to another episode of Chat with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Lou Silver. So, were you? Do you remember the day when um, Bruno got killed? Well, it was 1980, so I was only like 17 years old. Uh, I just remember it from being in the newspapers and things like that. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I am not in the mob. I am not a gangster. I'm an actor. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, I used to be in the streets. I was a gang member. I used to do bad things. I, I I was in and out of prison for a long time, and I decided to change my life about four or five years ago, and I'm not looking back. I'm trying to move forward, maybe get into acting, and um, I'm trying to show people out there that there's a different life possible for them. Well, that's let's, the listen, you know, uh, my daughter was born in uh, 2001. And when she was born, I made a conscious decision to leave Philadelphia because, uh, like you, like what you just said, you know, I, I just wanted to change my life and sort of start over. Let's get out of Philadelphia. Nothing good is happening here. Nothing. I got a daughter now. Uh, I'm going to Florida and I'm going to change my life now. Uh, it was the best thing that I ever did, move to Florida. In the same respect, leaving New Jersey and Philadelphia, uh, being as close as I was to Frank Vincent, you know, I always wonder what would have been. Would I have gotten more acting jobs? I mean, look, I had a wife at the time who was a complete pain in my ass. <laughs> Total bitch. I don't hold back. And she <laughs> held me back from doing from doing anything I ever wanted to do. So I tell, like I tell my daughter and I tell my nieces and nephews, the most important thing in life is that whoever you're with, make sure that they support your dreams. Because if you're with someone that's holding you back, telling you you can't do that, or that's not what I signed up for, get rid of them. Yeah. Get, they're gone. Because Someday you'll be sitting there wondering, wow, I should have taken a shot. Maybe I could have done that. So long story short, that wife that uh, held me back from acting in uh, 1998. Yeah, where's I, she Where's she at now? She's long gone, okay? <laughs> she's been long gone since 2009 in the rear view mirror. And I don't miss her this much. She's probably on her ninth divorce. <laughs> from what I hear, from what I hear, she's, she's, she's had a couple since then. But, hey, I wish her well. And But I learned. you if In life, surround yourself with people that believe in you and support your dreams. And you should do the same for people you love. That's important. Uh, my wife today supports... Me, you know, I, uh, I'll say, hey, honey, I got another audition. We got to do a what self she, she was in that the, the awning commercial thing with you, right? Actually, no, that's what, that's another funny. My wife is blonde, but whenever I go in the, in for a commercial and they cast me, they always cast me with a blonde wife. That's yeah, you're like, wife. can I just bring my wife in here? <laughs> <laughs> right. I just said, okay, you're the wife for the day. It's funny, you know, but yeah. – uh, I'll say to my wife, we got to do another self tape. You know, she's like, oh my God. But she goes, she's in it like a trooper. She holds the camera and she helps me with my lines. And uh, look, I'm enjoying the ride. It's a passion, it's a hobby. Probably 1% of all of the actors in the world make enough money to just act. Yeah. And, and, you know, everybody thinks when they see, oh, I, that, guy, that guy's an actor. He's on TV. He must be making a lot of money. That's, that's not true. I mean, uh, there's a large majority of people that you see on TV that still have other jobs. So it's Ubering it's, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they're Ubering. They're waiting tables. They're uh, in construction. They have other jobs because the acting is – the gigs are few and far between. And even if you're working all the time, unless you hit that A-list level, you're not really making change your life money. I don't know. When, when Capo comes out, you might be. <laughs> well, we, 
<laughs> Who knows, man? God's ears, right? Yeah. So there, there's a lot of people out there who want to get into acting. What is your advice for the people out there who want to get into acting? What is the most important thing for them to focus on? Is it like self tapes that you send in, or is it like their cadence, or what? What's the most important thing for well, someone who wants to start? It, you know, it's just like I want to be a professional golfer. So what are you going to do if you want to be a professional golfer? You're going to invest in your clubs. You're going to invest in your equipment. You're going to invest in lessons and you're going to practice, right? And you're going to play often. So acting is a business. So even though you have the passion to want to act, you have to make it a business. You need headshots. You need a professional resume. You need to maintain industry profiles on IMDb Pro, Actors Access, Casting Networks, Backstage. All that costs money. All that costs money to set up those profiles. So people say, I want to be an actor. Okay, show me your headshot. I don't have a headshot. Well, well, what the fuck do you want me to do with that? So, or I have a headshot. Okay, well, can anybody see it? Well, what what do you, how, how would they see it? Well, if you had an agent, which the only way you're going to get an agent is if you have these industry profiles, casting networks, actors access, IMD, B, the, the agent can look at you. She can see, he or she can see your headshots, your resume, your videos. Well, I haven't been in anything. Okay, you haven't been in anything. Take some acting classes, study monologues, and have your acting teacher Film your monologue. So your monologues now become content until you get something that was maybe a TV commercial or a walk on part or a one day play in a, in a film. It's a business that you have to be on those pages weekly, updating them, making sure the resume is current, updating new photos, taking your headshots once a year. I've seen people, they show me a headshot. I look at the person like, what it? Who's this imposter? You don't look anything like the headshot. <laughs> like, not for nothing. I hate to break it to you, but you're 40 pounds heavier than the headshot. Yeah, you have all this glammed up stuff, and then you come walking like, in the no, room, wait, and you look like what the hell? Wait, this is not. This is not. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Uh, plenty of fish or Tinder? This isn't like shooting for the date, and you get there, and like the person looks like a train wreck. When you get called to acting and you show up on that audition, you better look like your headshot. Otherwise, yeah. they're throwing you right out. <laughs> and I'd say you got to take classes. You know, even though you think, well, I know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing. If you find a really reputable teacher, and I, reputable is a big thing because this is an industry filled of scams and con artists, agents that want to charge you. Oh, uh, I need a fee to represent. You know, if you pay an agent to rep you, you just got robbed. The agent that's that, that wants to sell you headshots, no, they do one or the other. There's a great book for actors. It's uh, by a by uh, it's by a casting director named Lori Wyman, W Y M A N. She writes a book on, I think it's called The Organic Actor. It's a great book. And it tells you all the things to be careful of. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> yeah, Lori Wyman, she's a casting director in Miami. You can Google her. And her book is available on Amazon. I, I've read the book three times. I love the book. Um, I don't know where, where the audience is, but if the audience is in South Florida, uh, Sarah Rogers is an amazing acting coach. And she teaches uh, building your actor's brand. So if you go to her, she's going to teach you not only how to act, but she's going to teach you the business end of acting. And it's worth it. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people who will take advantage of that. I know a lot of people well, who want to so. get into it. I hope so. So what is your next move with, with acting, with your life? What's your next step? Whatever. Well, like I said, we're uh, going to start shooting Capo episode two, uh, hopefully in December, which is right around the corner. Jimmy Barbarisi is the producer. He and I are working on it, uh, fine tuning the script. And uh, 
in the interim. I'm hoping that my phone rings and it's Martin Scorsese. But <laughs> I got a better chance of hitting the lottery than that happening. But you never know. After Marty sees this Bill Stacks interview, I could be the next. I mean, listen, sadly enough, so many uh, of the crime genre actors have recently passed away. Ray Liotta, James Caan, Tony Sirica. Um, James Gandolfini. Well, yeah, yeah. Gandolfini. That was a while ago, but it's just it's he began, a lot. He, Yeah, Gandolfini began the... Uh, the descent. The descent after Gandolfini was Frank Vincent in 2017. But like this past month, losing Leota Khan and Sirica all in like three weeks that was that was like so tragic and sad but you know in this business when every door closes another door opens so maybe there'll be a, an unknown actor out there or young up-and-coming actors that might now get the parts that normally would have gone to the three actors that recently passed that's I know, the, so it gives an opportunity to somebody else. That's the attrition of acting. You know, it's funny. I got a funny Frank Vincent story. Frank used to get so pissed off when people would uh, confuse him with Dennis Farina. And <laughs> Dennis Farina then picked him <laughs> up. And so Frank was sort of like, you know, he, yeah, it's sad to hear the guy die, but at least nobody's going to think I'm Dennis Farina anymore. <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> right? And... Uh, they, listen, there's there's a lot of actors uh, that that most recently in the past couple of years they have gotten jobs because actors that were ahead of them had passed on. So this is an industry filled with nepotism. But this Here's is Dennis also, Farina. Yeah, right? okay, Here's so Dennis see, and Vincent. It's getting close, <laughs> right? And and back right, Frank would say. Do I look like this guy? I go, yeah, well, a little bit. You do look like this guy, you know? Hey, a little bit. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, listen, I'm happy. I have no complaints about life. I'm thrilled. I love what I'm doing. I uh, I thank uh, Danny Provenzano for this thing of ours. I thank Willie DeMeo for my day on the set of uh, Gravesend in 2018. And my biggest shout out is to Jimmy Barbarisi for giving me a uh, a leading role and putting my name on a movie poster, which I never thought I'd ever see. <laughs> at. Yeah, you you were in this thing of ours too. Yes, I was that in was this a... thing of ours. A uh, couple scenes. Uh, remember, back in '98, I'm about 25 pounds heavier. So you can find the fat guy in the yellow sweater. That's me. <laughs> Here, I'll show a picture of it real quick. Show a picture of the the cover. Yeah, that was a good good movie. I'll tell you, it was it was exciting to to uh, be there for it. I mean, uh, Frank had a big role. Uh, to spend a day on the set with James Caan back then, when this guy was like, for me, it was like meeting Babe Ruth, except yeah, it's like... it was better. Except it was better. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure being an actor and being around those people, you're like, damn, you're like, well, you, you try, you try to hold your composure. So I'm sitting there at breakfast, and Frank Vincent's to my left, and uh, you know, there's some other uh, actors that are, you know, unknown. Vinny Pastor's there, and there's an empty seat, and this guy comes around, and he sits down next to me, and he just goes, "Hey, good morning, I'm Jimmy." And I look over, it's, and I'm like, I don't know what to say. It's James Conn. He's sitting there, he goes, hi, I'm Jimmy. <laughs> You're like, what the like, hell? How the hell on? did this happen, right? <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Yeah, I know. And it's crazy. But that's that's the exciting part of acting. Every day is different. You never, and you never know where anything's, you know, they, they always, Robert De Niro has a saying, if you don't go, you don't know. So when you get an audition, you got to go. Because you never know. I've gone on auditions and did not get the part. But the, the producer or the director that I auditioned for referred me to someone else that was making a project that said, this guy auditioned for me. It wasn't right for my film. But, you know, you should give him a shot. So if you don't go, you don't know. Go on everything. Go on everything they give you. 
and uh, be respectful to your agents. So if you get a job on your own, pay your agent. They're working to get you work. Don't go out and do side work and not pay your agents. Just pay them. Make sure they're always eating just like you. Yeah. So is there any, are, are you ever going to come out with a book or anything like that? Me? I yeah. have trouble reading. No, uh, I, I highly doubt I'm going to write a book. I really, I just don't see it in my personality. Not at this age. Yeah. No, not yet. I got a long way to go. Who I knows what the future something. holds, right? <laughs> I got to have something to say that somebody wants to hear, right? Right now, they can never hey, man, a lot of that. people are going to be watching this interview. I'm sure they want to they want to know what you got to say uh, about well, acting, listen. about life, about everything. Uh, Bill, here's the deal. You, If you want to write a book with me after this <laughs> thing airs, if you get all your viewers that say, this guy needs to write a book, <laughs> you and I will write a book. We'll write the story uh, of my life. Yeah, man. Which, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to put some of the parts in the book. <laughs> Probably keep a lot, a lot out will, too, though. <laughs> a lot of parts will not make the book, but yeah. I promise it'll be good reading. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me. It's uh, We had some technical difficulty, but that's because I'm 60 years old. So I, <laughs> I normally have to get my daughter, an IT guy, and three like 20 year olds around me to, to make this <laughs> stuff work. But we got through it and I appreciate yeah. your patience and good luck with your show. I watch all your stuff on Instagram and Facebook and good luck with your uh, TV series and the, let's stay in touch. I yeah, know you're going to interview Jimmy next, right? Yeah. Jimmy's coming up next. And uh, Great. when do you expect uh, these interviews to air? They'll be out this week. Terrific. Maybe uh, Friday, Thursday. Chatting Friday. with Stacks. Chatting with Stacks. Chatting with Stacks. Love Thank it. you, man. All right, brother. So I'll be seeing you again. I'll definitely have you on for another interview in the future. And uh, I wish you the best with all your acting stuff, man. Thank you so much. Stay Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you can get my videos every time they drop. Till next time.